Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I'm your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Aaron Braggins, who will be sharing his experiences with the iPhone X. Never ever call it the iPhone X. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO33. Now, I, I give people crap for calling it the iPhone X, but I definitely called like Mac, Mac OS, OS X for the longest time because I didn't know better. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I agree. Uh, I go I go between them. Uh, ask Ryan. I, I think I'll probably call it an X for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just and that's that's one of one of the effects of like the fact that we we learn so many of the words these days that we say just by like reading, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like mm-hmm. how do, how do you pronounce this? I don't, I don't even know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is the brand new phone from Apple. The f- biggest change in the physical like um what would you call it the build of the phone uh, that they've had since i th- probably since the since they went from like the three and a half inch to having two larger uh options right yeah probably what the six is the first one they did the large screen on or no yeah the five uh, i'm not sure because we had yeah. let's see we had the five and then the next year we had the 5s and the 5c um, yeah, so it was the six where they did the six the plus. Six. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. So it's radically um, different than the. Well, radical's too big of a word. <laughs> Revolutionary? Oh, that's even bigger. Yeah. <laughs> According to them, maybe, but not any other phone manufacturer who has right, done edge right. to edge screens. <laughs> but yeah, and. Um, I mean, even even um, Apple's brave thing that they did last year, getting rid of the headphone jack, they weren't technically the first ones to do that either. Motorola beat them to it. Right. Oh, right. man. Um, so being that this is, like, their brand new phone hardware type, uh, they've bumped up the price by quite a bit. Yeah, they have. Um, probably, what, two to $300, depending on what level yeah. you get. Yeah, because like the the iPhone eight starts at what seven hundred and fifty, and then uh, and then we've got a thousand dollars as the starting point for the iPhone ten. Yeah, and I think I mean I I'm not a hundred percent sure, but what I understand it's mostly because of that's just the pass through cost that Samsung is charging Apple for a screen, right? Mm, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm I'm sure there there's total Apple tax on that, but. I think the big thing is Samsung is the only game in town when it comes to OLED screens. Um, you know, that, that's my interpretation of the news that I've read. Right. Right. Because we've seen how how well it goes when you try to have a flagship phone that uh, uses like an LG OLED LED screen. Yeah. Pixel Two XL. Oof, boy. So I think the screen by far for me is like the pinnacle of Apple phones. I mean, I've seen Mm -hmm. the um, Samsung that Ryan has, the Galaxy 8, I think it is. Yeah, the S8, yeah. The S8, that when he first showed it to me, I was just like, wow, that is a great screen. But then I put the phone in my hand and I was just like, okay, I don't have small hands, but that phone was just too big. It was just, Mm -hmm. you know one reason i never went with a plus size apple phones but i always wanted the camera i always wanted that screen and it this again this screen just blows me away like, right um and that, again that's why i would say i am just a big proponent of i don't care how much it is <laughs> that price point i knew i was in um because i got the huge screen i got the great camera um and, then, and you got a reasonable size body. Yes. Something that I could put my hand around, right? Like it's mm-hmm. it's just slightly bigger than the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 7, which is basically what I had before. Right. Yeah. And that's going and that's bumping you up from a 4.7 inch screen to 5.8, which is like that's wow, that's a whole more than an inch difference. Yep. That's yep. insane. And I I don't know how I lived without it before. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how to explain it any different, but it's just a amazing screen. Mm-hmm. 
And of course, with uh, with that edge to edge display, we've been hearing a lot about the notch that they had to leave uh, along the top. Um, yeah. So tell tell me about that. How you know, I can theorize about how good or bad that would be, but I haven't actually used the phone. So how does how is it? So I would say. Uh, I totally went into it blind. Like I heard reviews and people are like, oh, the notch, right? Or sorry, not reviews, speculation. Right. Um, but I kind of went into it like, you know what? I, I hate to say it, but I trust Apple design, right? I look into it. I got it. I don't even notice it. Like truly, I don't notice it. Um, okay. What I do notice is when I look at, let's say like Ryan's phone, I notice the bars more than I notice the notch. And I don't know if, if that's like just me trying to justify what I got with the iPhone, but like I see the black bars at the top and the bottom okay. when I look at someone else's phone now. Like I looked at a couple of our coworkers, uh, Pixel 2 XL and mm -hmm. Ryan's phone. I see those bars with the iPhone. For some reason, I don't. Which, Interesting. I just I I want to just say that's me biased, um, but a majority of the time, like I put I set a black background because this is the first OLED true like black yeah. screen, right? So I set a black background, so I don't even see the notch when I open my homepage uh, and look at all my apps, right? Mm -hmm. So if an app, let's say like it's an Apple app where it embraces the notch, you know notifications are on the left you know you got your battery your you know cellular connection and then you have the time it just kind of works right it, it mm -hmm. things get put where they're supposed to be you know you look at dare i say edge on my phone because i'm crazy and i installed microsoft edge on my phone um what they've done is they actually put the bar like a a they make it black at the top and black at the bottom like it's an old school app, right? So I basically, my screen, right. I shrunk, right? But then if I open Safari, it just, a majority of developers have built it where, or sorry, Apple developers have built it. So their apps just basically, they don't go past that section and they kind of respect the the top bar or the notch where mm -hmm. at some point that you know that it just scrolls and there's doesn't go past that so you don't really see it um landscape mode it's a different story it shows you know you have the notch in kind of almost in the way right i don't use my phone that way that much unless i'm watching like a youtube video or mm -hmm. you know some sort of video but it's really it's on a mobile device, so it's not that big a deal, I guess. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of curious to know how like games that are in landscape are going to treat it. Um, you know, obviously older games probably won't really get updated to adopt the new aspect ratio of the screen, but like newer games that come out that use landscape, um, yeah, what well, like well, yeah, how are they going to react to it? Yeah, um, I was going to say I don't play too many games on my mobile phone i of course am super addicted to the uh um pokemon go and um <laughs> the new uh what is it uh the oh, animal geez. crossing animal crossing thank you um that and hearthstone of all games okay yeah um, but i don't again i play those more on my ipad um mm. the hearthstone animal crossing it's always in landscape or uh, portrait mode, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And so is uh, uh, Pokemon Go. So I, I'm loading up uh, Hearthstone right now, um, and it looks like it kind of puts borders on the left and right. Mm -hmm. So it. Whoa, oops. <laughs> Hello, <Yeah>. innkeeper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It it basically adds borders on the left and right. So it shrinks the aspect ratio back down to uh, like a normal iPhone. Right. Right. So, yeah, yeah I'm, that does look kind of weird, but. So, yeah, of course the, the notch is there because they had to fit a whole bunch of sensors in there. Um, not only like the, the front facing camera that we've always had and like, um, 
the the ambient light sensor and stuff like that. Um, but we've also got a whole bunch of new sensors for the Face ID, right? Yep, yep. Because um, there's no no fingerprint sensor anymore. There was a lot of speculation before this phone was announced as to whether they were going to have like a fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone or like under the screen somehow. Um, but we have we have facial recognition. So tell me about that. Um, I think it's amazing. Um, I've probably said that a lot, or I will say that a lot. Um, so for me, uh, it is going to be the future. I want it on all my devices. Like mm -hmm. I had uh, Windows Hello on the main PC I have in my house, and it worked two days, maybe three days. And then one day, like I've got a hoodie on, it was dark in my basement and it just didn't work. Like I was mm. just like, okay, well, why did it stop working? What's wrong? And it really never worked after that point. Um, tried rebooting, tried doing everything right. And it just, it still never would work well. The iPhone pitch black room, just swipe up. And it, that, the uh, IR sensor that they are sending out all the pixels to map my face. Mm -hmm. That was just, I, I don't know how they do it, but it's amazing. It works for me. It has worked every single time. The only time it, let's say doesn't work is when I'm not like paying attention to it. When I'm not looking at it, mm -hmm. that's kind of when it's like, Oh, and then I start to look at it. I'm looking away from it. I look at it, and then all of a sudden it unlocks. Right. Because that's one of the requirements for it to unlock, right, is that you have to be looking at to, it. Yeah, it has an attention setting. But you can turn that off. So like, oh. um, that's one of the benefits is you can turn that off, but then your phone's less secure. Mm -hmm. So like the, you know, the scenario of, oh, what happens if someone grabs your phone, shoves it up to your face, and then runs away? If you're not looking at it, um, it in, in the scenario I have where you need the attention to unlock, it won't unlock. Mm -hmm. But let's say if I didn't have that setting turned on, they could just throw it in front of my face, run away, and my phone would be unlocked. Um, it's a nice setting. It's a security feature. I know a lot of people, um, at least in the podcast sphere, they actually turn that off. Mm -hmm. Because they have a lot of trouble with face uh, face unlock, um, mm. but I I I, I haven't seen that, um, and I've done and so I have a couple things where I want to try to do. So the cool thing about face unlock is it learns over time. So like you know, let's say you grow a beard or you start to grow a mustache or you grow your hair out. Every day when you unlock your phone. Anytime it fails and you punch in a code, it takes a quick shot of your face and then adds that to the AI or the machine learning to unlock the phone. Okay. So like it, it over time will learn when it's made mistakes. So I've been cycling to work and as it's been getting colder, I've been adding more and more layers, uh, yeah. balaclava to cover my face and, you know, just add a helmet so for the longest time it wouldn't understand when i had a helmet on my head but today was actually the first day i had my helmet on i swiped my phone up and it was just boom it was unlocked so it's to me that's really cool it's like it can kind of learn as you're going right mm -hmm. so my my fear right now is let's say i put someone who doesn't necessarily look like me but i dress them up in a balaclava put on a helmet, put on my glasses, could they unlock my phone? Right, yeah. Like, so it's like I've taught the phone or their engine to say, okay, this is a okay picture, but is it really still sensing kind of like all my facial features, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the balaclava I have is pretty tight, so it does see my cheekbones. It will see like all the points that they say are their trigger points, right? Yeah. You know, from above your lips to your forehead, um, they have... It still they, has that depth map. Right, right. So it's that depth map. Can they still see that in someone else if it's covered with, like, 
you know, basically covered. Um, mm-hmm. So that's my kind of, w- I'm going to try that or I'm going to try to get someone at work to try that. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm curious since you, you, the wording that you used at least made me think of, um, you know, what if, what if I know the passcode for somebody else's phone and I just happen to be the one who goes and types in the passcode, like, will it try to <clears throat> meld data points from my face with its existing database for that person, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I think, I think it won't. I mean, well, sorry, I should re- reiterate that. Cause that's like how... hopefully, hopefully it can tell the difference between myself and my fiance and go like, okay, clearly this is a guest. Yes. That I think it will, uh, w- or should understand, but there have been cases where like two twins mm-hmm. have tricked it into, this kind of phase where, oh, it unlocks for both of them, right? Mm-hmm. Where they were just saying, oh, let's let's try to figure this out. Let's see if we can, you know, kind of beat the system. And then there was another example where a woman and her son, which they have some caveat about the age of the, the person that can unlock the phone, where uh-huh. basically her son could unlock her phone because his facial features really uh, weren't defined yet uh, hmm. beyond kind of, you know, what's inherited, right? Uh, so there, there have been some instances where it's been tricked, but those were all kind of, you know, caveats where you could kind of say, well, it's your twin. They said that majority of times twins can trick this system. And it was someone who was under the age of like 14 where... They define saying, hey, you need to be like, you know, 16, 17, 18 up to really take advantage of this. Right, right. But, It'll be interesting to see if in the future, um, if they are able to develop the technology of having like the fingerprint under the screen, if they'll give you the option of either or kind of thing. Yeah. Because um, Face ID seems like it works way faster, but like... You know, if there are these caveats that, like, yeah, my twin can unlock my phone, even that, you know, but if we have different fingerprints, then that system won't be able to be tricked. So. Right, right. And I agree. I actually, as much as I like Face ID, Face Unlock, um, I would still like to have a thumbprint just as another point to use. Like, um, you know, the idea of being able to pull your phone out of your pocket and even before it gets up to your face, it could be unlocked, right? Mm -hmm. Because the way you just, you know, pull the phone out of your pocket, your thumbs on the reader, boom, it reads, boom, it's done. Even though FaceTime is really quick and like it's non obtrusive, um, uh, but having some sort of uh, biometric beyond the face unlock would be really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, if if you are in a situation where somebody might try to use your face to unlock your phone and then run away, um, you can like lock out Face ID. Uh, I forget if it's is it is it hitting the power button a bunch of times or is it holding it down? Um, I believe it's hitting the home button or on this phone the power button five times, uh-huh. and it should turn the phone into lock where it needs a passcode. Yep. Right. And I believe that was yeah. something in the last uh, version of iOS that they uh, they released, which is really nice. Um, yeah. Cool. But like, cool. uh, are you familiar with the Razer phone? Yeah, I've seen a few videos about it. So they have a feature where the power button is a thumbprint reader. Oh yeah. And to me, like, I get the under, you know, I get they want to remove like all mechanical buttons from phones if they possibly can Mm -hmm. just from like no dust no dirt no water right yeah i would really love to see that feature on the iphone um or even the the reader on the back and or Mm -hmm. the front but knowing apple and the having the courage like you said to remove the (laughs) the phone jack i just don't see him backpedaling on this at all Right, um, right. You know, because like, uh, what was it? 
one of the features or the downfalls to face unlock is you can only have one face, right? So you you yeah oh, usually sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah that <laughs> yes it's normal you only have one face uh, a lot of use cases for you know families is oh rather than giving someone my passcode I would load their uh, finger into my iPhone seven. So uh-huh. my better half could grab my phone and unlock it and use it if she needed to. Right. Well, with the iPhone 10, that is not going to happen because you can only ah, have so, one okay. face. Um, and finding out after a bunch of uh, tech blogs, you know, reported that to Apple, they said, oh, by the way, adding multiple fingerprints to your phone. Well, that's a... Uh, that wasn't a, it's a feature that was a flaw. Oh, oh, like, sure. <laughs> right. That was a hack. Well, okay. <sighs> so I think after a while, like we should be able to get to that point. Mm-hmm. Like as the phone battery life and processing power gets better, we should be able to add multiple faces to some sort of biometric unlock system. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, the fact that we can do one now in a mobile device is amazing. Yeah. Do, so I think iPads support having multiple user accounts on them, right? Like multiple local user accounts. Do do iPhones support that? I don't know. Um, I, Actually, now that I say that, I'm not sure if iPads do either. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it sounds like it's still not really like... A supported supported feature but there's like a lot of kind of ways to you know kind of hack your way into having almost multiple user accounts sure but, um, but not really <laughs> right oh well um, one of the other brand new things on the iPhone 10 is the fact that of course there's no home button on it so they've had to replace a lot of those interactions that you used to have with the home button with gestures on the screen. Um, so how are those going for you? Uh, for me, it's uh, it's a learning curve, but I'm really liking it. Like mm-hmm. the uh, swiping from the bottom half of the screen to swipe between applications, uh, it's just, it makes so much sense. It's really quick uh, to go forward and to go back. Um, yeah. It does take some time to figure out how to force close apps, though. So if you're not okay. used to it, um, and again, some people say you should never force close apps at all, uh, but you swipe up and hold, and then you have to press and hold to close an app. Oh, so you don't you don't like swipe the app up anymore to get rid of it? No. Um, at, and again, I don't know if that's just with the iPhone 10 or if it's with, I know that they made a change with iOS 11 that force closing uh, is different. Oh, okay. Well, I I know that I can remove apps from the multitasking screen uh, in, on the iPad in iOS 11 by just swiping them up. Okay. Yeah. So you, it completely different. Now you swipe up and hold and that'll bring up your, uh, application manager and yep. then you can swipe you know between them but mm-hmm. then you have to press and hold and then it'll bring up this little you know icon on the phone and you just basically close apps hmm. uh, that way that's that's not something i would have expected them to change for the iphone 10 because it it's not an interaction that you needed the home button for in the past well so i think it's Basically, because the swipe up mm-hmm. is such a that's that's how to get back home. Right? Okay, so they're like redefining what a swipe up means. Yep, yep. So they're kind of changing that paradigm where, like, swipe up gets you to the home screen again because there is no mm-hmm. like tap to get to home. And, right. You know, now that I say it out loud, I never even noticed that that was. That's why they did it that way, Mm -hmm. right? Like, it's just already so ingrained in me. I've had it for maybe two months now. Uh, No, maybe a month. 
that swiping up is just so natural to get to the home page again, mm -hmm. uh, to get to the home screen. Uh, yeah, so closing apps requires you to interact or hold and press, right? So that took a while. I only had one app that ever crashed on me, and I don't necessarily know if it crashed, um, where it just, I couldn't understand how to get out of the full screen app. Um, oh. <laughs> right. And I think it was something that was locked in landscape. Um, and I just didn't, couldn't understand the gesture and the swipes. Mm -hmm. So, but honestly, it took me probably about a day or two to get used to not having a home button. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, okay. So we have swipe up to get to home. We have like kind of swipe up and to the right sort of to, to get to the app switching. What are, are there any other gestures that we have so um, when you have an app open these are the ones i know off the top of my head when you have an app open there's a little bar at the bottom then that's simulating your home button mm -hmm. you can swipe left and right on that mm -hmm. and that will switch between the apps that are running just as if you were in the app switcher okay um that's but, nice that's nice because i i I don't think that iOS had a quick way to like switch to the last app that you were using. Is that correct? Not that I remember. Okay. Good, good. Um, the biggest changes are uh, the swipe from the right horn or the left horn to bring up your notifications. And what do they call it? The, the... Uh, the control center? or Yeah, control center. Yeah. So the and by horn, you mean the uh, at the top of the screen on either side of the notch? Yep. Okay. I, I call them the horns. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so swipe from the right brings up control center, and then swipe from the left brings up notifications. Mm -hmm. um, those are the biggest things that changed. Because uh, before, they were part would... of the swipe up, if I remember... Yeah, the control center was a swipe up from from the bottom of the screen, yeah. And then, of course, notifications was just any time these swipe from the top of the screen anywhere, it was notifications. Yep. Uh, so those are the biggest change. Um, but like I said, you get used to that really quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's almost intuitive. Um, yeah. So other than that, I don't know if there's any other gestures or features. Oh, I just thought of one. Um. When they introduced like the plus size iPhones, they also introduced uh, like this, like not when you click the home button, but if you just kind of like tap on it, right, then it'll it'll move the entire screen down so that you can reach the top of the screen easier. Is Do you know if there's uh, a way to do that on the iPhone 10? There is. Uh, what is that? It's reach mode. Um, right. Which, by the way... I think is like the most inelegant solution to that problem that I can think of. And I'm very surprised that that's what Apple did. Yeah. There. Oh shoot. There is a way to do it. Um, I don't remember what it is. Uh, so I can tell you a story about a feature that, uh, I never knew iOS had is they have a magnification mode. Um, Oh, so you can like magnify, your screen with this little window that will magnify the area that you're moused over. So I'm sitting at a happy hour with some coworkers, pull my phone out of my pocket, and there is this magnifying glass over an area with like this touch reticle. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. But I could not figure out how to get it off of my phone. Like, <laughs> I just, there's no indication about how it came up, why it came up. Hmm. So I'm just like, well, I'll figure that out when I get home. Apparently, when you triple tap your phone, it brings up a, sorry, triple tap with three fingers. Your oh. phone, it brings up a magnifying glass and triple tap and it disappears. Huh. So I don't know how I pulled my pocket or my phone out of my pocket, triple tapped it with three fingers to bring up a magnifying glass, but... <sighs> That's, That's a, interesting. Yeah, it's a feature of the the operating system. Hmm. Um, so I looked into reachability mode, and um, apparently, once you have turned it on in the accessibility settings in the settings app, uh, then you can swipe down on the home bar. 
uh, cool. and it'll and it'll uh, bring down the whole. So that does feel like a very natural gesture, um, you know, kind of pulling sure. down all of the content that's on your screen. Okay, that makes sense. So when you're in the uh, in the app, you can swipe down on the bar, like you said. That's pretty slick. Um, <laughs> one thing that is a little irritating looking at this. So there's still the home bar where you have your base icons, mm-hmm. right? You can't swipe down on that. So if your phone, oh, when you're on the home screen, right? When you're on a home screen, you would think uh-huh. that that accessibility would still be there uh, because I can't reach the top of my screen, right? Right, right. But it's only when it's in an app. Hmm. Yeah, because that definitely that reachability mode definitely was available on the home screen right. in previous iPhones. Right, because like for me, let's say I was riding my bike, it's it's more useful when it's I want to open an app versus I'm already in an app and I need to, excuse me, reach the sure. top. Sure, right, especially since iOS forces you to fill the home screen from top to bottom. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm, good call. So with with this new form factor size, do you feel that you still need the that reachability mode to be able um, to like use it one handed? I think so because I like to kung fu grip my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it, part of it is why I have a case on it is the one of the features is it's a glass back phone, mm-hmm. and having cracked a few phones before in my lifetime, I just I don't want to drop my phone. So, right, right. As, you know, again, my use case is I'm riding my bike, right? I don't want mm-hmm. to drop my phone and have to get off my bike and go back and pick it up. So, yeah, that's uh, it's kind of a bummer. I don't think you necessarily need it because um, I can kind of reach everything based on the, the screen size. Mm-hmm. But I do kind of have to stretch if I want to get into uh, control center or if I want to bring up notifications. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is a yeah. little bit of a reach, but it's not that bad. Now, speaking of glass back, the the reason that they went with the glass back this time, of course, was so that they could add wireless charging. Um, so let's talk a little bit about like the battery and the charging situation and stuff like that. Sure. Um, so what they do, they they with this phone, they have the basic charger will trickle charge your phone just like any other phone they include Mm -hmm. that in the box um, and that's just like normal phone charging no fast charge to get a fast charge on an iphone um, and i believe this is true with the iphone 7 and the 6 is you had to buy an upgraded charger right the bigger brick the bigger brick like the ipad charger and then buy a special cable that was... Oh, really? Yeah, that was, like, at least for the iPhone, is USB-C to lightning. Hmm. Because the power brick is USB-C that fast charges this phone. Um, is that it, the same brick that they ship with the MacBook Pro, then? Um, I bought Aftermarket, but uh-huh. I believe it is the one that they ship with the MacBook Pro. Okay. Or sorry, uh, not the MacBook Pro, the Executive Book, so the iBook or the the MacBook, the original. Right. Okay. Because I think it's like the... twenty nine watts or something like that. Okay. Yeah. The uh, the the MacBook that has a single USB C port and uh, is is a successor to the MacBook Air, but is not. <laughs> Correct. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Um, as people call it, the executive book. Okay. Yeah. So you, that, that's actually the first time that I've heard that name. Oh, okay. Um, so it requires an an accessory, two accessories. One's the charger and one's the cable. Mm-hmm. Though the cable from Apple is way too expensive at $30, but no one makes a really good aftermarket cable. I wish Anchor would, um, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, they do make a USB-C 20 or 30, 29 or 30 watt fast charger for a reasonable like $20. Okay. Uh, so that, that's what I got for my phone and for uh, Rebecca's phone. 
um, mm-hmm. is we have two fast chargers, um, and that works amazing. Like it, it'll get a majority of the charge in less than ten minutes. Uh, nice. So it's just blows my mind. But the real feature is the Q wireless charging standard, mm-hmm. where you just drop it on a charging stone and it fires off some uh, energy to your phone. I was trying to come up with a real funny term for it, but it basically sends power to your phone and it charges your phone wirelessly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that through that... like uh, magnetic induction, I think is the technical term for that yep. or something. Yep. Microwaves from the pad to your phone. So just don't put your body in between it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and wireless charging, I mean, from my understanding is that it's always been slower than wired charging. Is that still the case? So right now I've never used wireless charging on the iPhone. Um, okay. Because I'm uh, again, waiting for the next phase of wireless charging. Um, mm-hmm. So like a bunch of car manufacturers have a, basically said, Hey, we're making one cup holder in the car, a Q charger, um, or mm-hmm. like, you know, the, the small cubby underneath the radio next to the shifter, that's where you throw your phone, it'll charge. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, Ikea has a couple lamps that have charging spots. Um, I've never been a big fan of, hey, hit this target and we'll charge your phone. Um, I'm waiting for the device where, yeah, I just set my phone on my nightstand or somewhere and it just magically charges um now that said my understanding apple is going to come out with a charging pad yeah that big one yeah the big one that will have multiple spots where you can drop your phone or your watch or um the airpods if you get another charging case for it um supposedly that's going to have multiple targets Mm-hmm. Uh, where you can set your phone down. Um, well, yeah, it has to because it, it can charge like up to three or four devices at once, I think. Correct. Um, so that would be where they're kind of pushing the boundary or, you know, pushing the standard. But I just still not not what I'm looking for. Uh, right, right. Um, I, I remember reading like 10 or 12 years ago in Popular Science Magazine that like, oh yeah, wireless charging, you know, it's just going to be like anywhere you are in your house, whether it's touching something or not, it'll just be charging, you know, it'll blanket the, the area just like a Wi-Fi network. And, you know, you'll even be able to like, um, the, the, the wireless charging networks will be able to lock out devices based on whether they have the right password or not, just like a Wi-Fi network. And I was like, sweet. Yes. Let's <laughs> yes, do that. <laughs> I knew up for that. Totally. <laughs> you know, I mean, I remember, uh, God, some eighties, nineties where you could have appliances like a can opener or a, um, uh, what do you call it? A food processor but you have to set it on a specific spot in the kitchen and it would power up and it was all wireless, right? (laughs) All right. But you had that touch target where you kind of still had to say, well, this is the spot where the power's coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to get like, I was hoping Apple would get beyond the kind of the standard and say, Hey, we figured out something or some dare I say magic that will just send power from your socket to your the top of your nightstand um Mm -hmm. but yeah uh to to touch back on your question about fast charging over wireless if i remember correctly they do support a faster charge over wireless but it's not like the true fast charge um right so like what you can if you're attached to a cable um yeah yeah so there is some there is fast charge, but I, I I would say that's not revolutionary. Like, you know, right? They've done they have some magic that makes it happen. No, I would imagine that in the future we'll see the same kind of split between like wireless charging and wired charging as we currently see between like Wi-Fi and Ethernet. Right? Mm-hmm. If you you know are, are an enthusiast, you know that you need like the lowest latency possible, the highest 
reliability, you know, you're going to plug in your computer via an Ethernet cable. For the vast majority of the population, people are just going to use wireless, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, I have a coworker who has, uh, I don't think it's the Samsung, but he basically fast charges. The only time he charges his phone is when he's in the car on his commute to work. Mm. So it fast charges Not even in overnight. the morning huh. and at night. And then he's got full, full life, full day, all day use on his phone. Um, That's a pretty nice pattern. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fortunate, um, unfortunate for me, let's, so battery life, let's jump into that. Um, yeah. So like for me, uh, right now, I uh, I woke up at 5.30, mm-hmm. um, started a workout at 6, rode to work, listened to podcasts from or podcasts and music from that time at work, up to work. And then on the way home, rode home, shoveled the driveway a little bit, and then it's what? 7.30? Seven, I'm at 7.30 right now. percent of phone. Wow. Um, so that it was, that's relatively good. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a power user when I'm at work, mm-hmm. uh, but definitely for, let's say, general consumer, checking some emails, surfing the web, doing a little bit of work, uh, Twitter, Facebook, all those fun social medias, text messages. It's definitely an all-day phone. Um, mm-hmm. I start to get into some video games or, you know, playing Hearthstone, playing uh, Animal Crossing. You can see battery life just start to degrade because you your screen's on all the time. Yeah. Um, but I would say the battery life to me is super impressive, especially for the screen and just the quality of, like they, I wouldn't say that it's the quality of the screen. They've figured out power management. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, jumping along the lines of, you know, uh, uh, an attention. If you're not looking at the screen, it will shut off. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're you on, let's say you unlock it, you start looking at something, and you're distracted it'll shut off a lot faster than when you're staring at the phone. So it knows oh, when you're okay. looking at it. Um, so that's kind of one of the places where they've really done a good job about uh, battery right? screen being on. A little scary uh, because they know well, I'm looking at it. Yeah, but I mean, you know that they know already because Face ID is always looking to see if you're looking at it. So Right. So it, it's a good feature. It's just a little... Depends on how you take like them knowing when you're paying attention to your phone. Right. We could definitely use that in, say, marketing to know, you know, whether or not you're actually looking at the advertisements that are on the screen at the time. Yeah. See, coming from marketing, and, that's that's great. But coming from the consumer end, I don't necessarily know if you I want you to know I'm looking at your ad. Right. Or not, right. Right. And and of all the things for them to be keeping tabs on your attention for, that's probably the most like innocent example that we can come up with, right? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, and then uh, totally jumping back to battery life. Um, yeah. Uh, with the uh, when we were first going to record this pork this podcast, um, mm-hmm. it was a Sunday. I actually made. Uh, note to try to use my phone as much as I could that Sunday. So oh, I, yeah. I recorded a video. Um, I talked on the phone for about an hour, listened to a bunch of podcasts, did everything I possibly could on my phone. And I was still at like 21% when I was going to go to bed. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it was like a bridge opened on a street that had been closed for the longest time. So I recorded a quick little video while I was driving, sent it off to someone saying, Hey, look, the bridge is open. Woohoo. You know, (laughs) you know, did a grocery shopping trip and like checked everything off my wonder list, you know, so that, I mean, to me, you know, wonder list and then scanning everything in for, uh, targets, uh, uh, the cartwheel app, the cartwheel app. Yep. Yep. So scanning everything in, that's just, your screen's always on and, the phone just was still running strong right when I was going to end the day. So like nice, the, the battery is super impressive. Yeah. Yeah. 
We've come a long way since the Nexus 5, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I would, you know, I'd even say since the iPhone 6, and this may be just, like, in my head, but, like, the battery's bigger than the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 7 that I came from. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, I don't, I I could look it up to see if that, if it is technically larger, but. Right, in terms of milliamp hours? Right, right. Um, yeah, it looks like on the iPhone 10 we got 2716 milliamp hours, which, uh, sounds pretty high for a typical iPhone. Um, I, th- I think they were, I think they were usually below 2000 in the, in the past. Yeah, I'm trying to look it up quick. Yeah, let's see, if we're looking, uh, at the iPhone 7, the regular size 7 had just shy of 2000 milliamp hours. Okay. Yeah, that's what I what I came from. Yeah, the 6S was uh, 1,700. So yeah, that's a full 1,000 milliamp hours more in the iPhone 10. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> and in, in roughly the same sized body. That's amazing. Yeah, it's slightly bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, and then slightly smaller than the S, S8. Oh, okay, yeah. Now, of course, you were comparing it to Ryan's, right? Correct. Which is uh, the S8 Plus. Um, I haven't seen a regular size S8 out in the wild. Okay. Do they make such yeah. a thing? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, because there's the, there's the S8, and then there's the S8 Plus, and then there's the Note. Right. Uh, and um, I, I haven't seen a, a recent Note either. Yeah. Apparently, there's one at uh, our office, but... I have yet to see it. Ryan said he's seen mm-hmm. it, but turns out when I start working, uh, you know, in a public high school, I see significantly fewer brand new phones out there because uh, high schoolers don't have as much in- disposable income. Sure, they get the hand-me-downs from the parents. Exactly, exactly. Literally the other week, I passed by one of my students' desks and I'm like, "Hey, is that an Nexus Five? And he's like, "Yeah, Mr. Buck." And you asked me that last year too, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, right." <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yep. Um, one thing that I did just think of with the display while we were talking about battery life is um, a lot of recent phones that have OLED displays um, will have some sort of like always on display, right? Um, so yep. like, for example, my Pixel 2, you know, has like the clock on and it's got a series of little icons for the notifications that I currently have. Um, have they put anything like that on the, uh, on that 10? They do not have that yet. And I, I, okay. I'm super envious of that like feature because, uh, like I prop my phone up and it's just sitting in like a little cradle and it would be really nice if it was like the always on clock. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Johnny Ive, who's the, uh, I don't know, the, design, the designer man, industrial design guy at Apple um, has said that the best thing about the phone is right now they're getting or sorry, the best thing about the iPhone platform is they're getting to a point where it is no longer hardware restricted. It is all software. Hmm. So they haven't said that that's a feature but it's something that they can modify in software with OLED. Oh yeah, very easily. Right. So I have hope um, mm-hmm. that that you know maybe something that we see just in the software revision down the road. So and that you know maybe they're uh, you know since it is the you know the first release of the new phone, the battery life. Um, it, and it it's my understanding that you're still sending power to the lit up pixels. Mm-hmm. in the always on it's just it's super cheap to brighten the white right right yeah yeah because well because the, the rest of the pixels that aren't the white pixels are not being powered at all they're they're right. not displaying anything yeah yeah um, um so not quite not quite the level of cool of like an e-ink display you know which can just hold an image for forever without you having to send power to it sure but um but it's it's almost at that same level of cool <laughs> yeah 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 i hope they get that i really do um because that i mean that's such a nice feature just a you know hey your phone's already propped up on your desk um 
that's just again a nice feature you know uh my morning routine is set my phone on the counter lean it up against the wall and just i can look at my phone and turn on a podcast turn on music it would just be nice to say oh by the way here here's a clock right right mm-hmm. yeah actually this makes me think of um for for the last few years um i i turned on like the i think they used to call it daydream on android um where if the if the phone is plugged in for a while and you know i i don't like turn off the screen it'll just go into this like kind of showing a clock with a black background but of course in the past i had an lcd screen on my phone so if i left that as like my my bedside clock it would just be bathing the whole room with you know this like very noticeable glow and um sure. my fiance did not like that and so I, I stopped using that feature after a while but now with the oled display it's actually you know feasible to use sure sure so how does that so on a technical standpoint like ol oled burn-in is an issue right so how does your i mean this is probably going off our podcast but how does it how does your screen circumvent that issue like, I would suspect that they that they move the elements around on the screen uh, so slowly that, that I cannot perceive it, but like you know, right? Um, but but enough that the pixels aren't constantly being lit in that okay. same way. Okay. Um, I have noticed, like for example, the uh, when I have the phone like unlocked, um the icons for the notifications that are way up there in the upper left hand corner yep. um they, they're not lined up with the very left edge of the screen so i bet you that they're that they're they vary that distance from the edge of the screen sure so that yeah. you don't have those notifications icons there the whole time in okay. the exact same place and I know that in the case of like the the navigation buttons down at the bottom, the home button and the back button and the multitasking, um, they they have different apps that will invert those colors, you know. So going instead of a black background with white buttons, some apps will display that as a white background with darker buttons. No, oh, okay. So yeah. Kinda cool. Um, I noticed that you've got uh some notes here about um, the lack of buttons and how that affects some things, uh, such as Apple Pay? Yeah, so, like, that's the... It's very clunky now, especially... So, like, the process of Apple Pay before was you put your thumb on the on the reader and mm -hmm. you, you drop it on whatever pay stone, right, that you're, you yep. know, whether it's a credit card reader or Square Pay or whatever... You just kind of, it's a fluid action, right? Yeah. Where now you, with face unlock, you have to do some weird stuff. And, and I say weird is it's just learning the paradigm, but you have to double tap the pay button and that brings up Apple Pay. And then you look at the phone to unlock Apple Pay and then you set it down on the pay stone. Huh. But if you're super... So, so you... So when you say you have to double tap the pay button, do you mean that you have to already have the Apple Pay app open? No, my my bad. Uh, the power button. Oh, okay. You have to double tap the power button. So when let's let's say the phone's in lock mode. Uh huh. You walk up to a cash register. You double tap the pay button. It brings up Apple Pay. You look at the phone, and then it says, uh, after you look at the phone, it says hold near reader. At the mm -hmm. At that point, before you hold it near the reader, you can select a new credit card if it's not your default card. Okay. So it requires me to initiate Apple Pay before I walk up and hit the pay stone. Right. Before it was, I drop my phone on the pay stone and then just touch the button and it unlocks. Right. So it's really clunky if you're used to that paradigm where you walk up set your phone on the pay stone and then it says oh it's initiating that majority of the time the phone is at such an angle where you cannot see yourself right right yeah so you have to like do this awkward thing of reaching over looking down and then getting this thing to <laughs> unlock 
it took me a while to figure out what I needed to do to make it more smoothly, and that's the double tap to bring it up, look at it, unlock it, and then drop it on the pay stone versus, oh, let's just put it on the pay stone and go touch it. Um, mm-hmm. That said, I'm going to start using my watch a whole heck of a lot more to just pay for things. Because right. All I need to do is walk up, unlock my phone, or sorry, walk up, touch the paste on with my watch, boom, we're good. As long as right. it hasn't, you know, um, removed from contact with my skin, right? Right, right. So it's just a smoother transition. Transition. Um, mm-hmm. And then, so along that same lines, installing apps from the App Store, you have to... Oh, yeah, you used to be able to use your fingerprint, yeah. Yep. Same thing, you have to, um, so you select the app, you install the app, and then it wants you to double tap the power button to, un, you know, to initiate install. Huh. I don't know what they were <laughs> thinking. It is not, it works, but I just, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, so it's like, it's like double tap the power button to confirm that you want us to take your face as as the uh the the authentication yeah and that's just and they do a really good ui on how like what needs to happen but Mm -hmm. it's just very clunky like if my phone's unlocked why not just do it like my phone's unlocked Mm -hmm. i've said install why not just I'm looking at my phone. Why not just read my face and be like, yep, that's you. You wanted this, right? Yeah. Like, okay, now I need to confirm it. I double click and then it reads my face and then installs. It's just, it's not very. uh, And in the case of Apple Pay, like the awkward thing with that for me has always been, there's no way for me to practice this on my own. You know, the only time that I ever use this feature is when I am standing there in front of a cashier with a line behind me. Sure. And I'm like, well, if this doesn't work right the first time, I can't fiddle around and figure out why. I can't troubleshoot in this situation. <laughs> I, I, I'm just gonna grab. I'm just gonna reach for my wallet. You know. Yep. I I I agree. I would say find a find a small local bakery that's very patient um Mm -hmm. that you know is busy but not that busy (laughs) Um, luckily we have a bakery that's just basically stone throw from my front door so every Mm -hmm. weekend i go in there and i try to pay with apple pay so and as somebody who hates to like spend money when I don't have to, you know, having like a, a, a price tag associated with have with like practicing a certain feature. is like, Whoa, that's, that's a weird, weird ask. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, but as much as I complain about it, uh, my, I am a huge proponent of, uh, cashless or seamless transactions. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I, I, I hate carrying money on me. Um, I would much rather have some sort of quick little just tap to go to tap to pay or some sort of system where like it's just it's just magic. I like to say it's magic a lot. I know there's a lot of technical uh, uh, backing to it, but like Mm -hmm. our whole security theater about, you know, signatures and pins and all that stuff is just super frustrating to me. So, right. Like just make it super simple and fast and i'm good to go yeah yeah whenever i'm like i'm I'm using mobile payment and then they ask me for a signature i'm like excuse me my fingerprint was like the authentication here yeah nobody else can use my phone yep <laughs> and then every time mm-hmm. i say that i'm like okay i shouldn't say that because i know that the person behind the cash register has nothing to do with the initiation of their system and all right that, you know like <laughs> super nerdy yeah uh, you know inner thinking an inner monologue yeah mm-hmm. but yeah so to me apple pay is like on the phone if you're using it just as the phone on the iphone 10 it is really clunky right now um, mm-hmm. i would say it's a step back uh, but once you learn it it's you know it, it, it works right yeah so yeah. and i think that's probably kind of just with learning a new system 
kind of like the, all the quirks with iOS 11. It's just kind of, you know, there's they don't have instruction manuals anymore, right? Right. Yeah, we can probably, uh, you know, thank Snapchat partially for the death of the tutorial. <laughs> I'm never going to stop giving that app a hard time. Um, which actually reminds me, the one thing that we haven't really talked about, which is definitely a prerequisite when talking about a new phone release, is uh, how's that camera? Um, so, uh, for me, it is amazing. Um, I've been playing with the... Uh, this is my first dual camera, uh, you know, wide depth with the, uh, what is it? With the uh, portrait mode. Telephoto lens, right? So it's like, uh -huh. and, and portrait mode. So I, I, again, I never jumped up to the plus. I always had the six, I had the seven. Um, mm -hmm. And then the, uh, this, this phone. So this is the first time with that camera. Um I'm not a super big photo guy, but I'm trying to get into like, you know, taking a bunch of photos. Mm -hmm. But right now, everything I've taken a shot of is just amazing. Like I take photos of my dogs, my cats, and it's just like doing that whole bokeh view, with the, which is what they have for the, um, what is it? Photo, not photo view. Um, po portrait mode. Portrait mode, right. Just being yeah. able to do that is just to me, awesome. I've taken some really good shots of my dog, um, and some good shots of myself, but I just, you know, that's, <laughs> that's just me. I'm ugly. So whatever. <laughs> uh, but taking photos, I love it. Um, the, uh, I want it like this summer, I want to actually start doing photo walks. And that's kind of one of the reasons I was like, yes, finally, I have the, the good camera that I've been hearing about that can do really good zooms. Um, I've always been a big fan of the, the camera on the iPhone. Um, the one big proponent is it's all hardware based versus software based. So it can mm -hmm. do all the work on the phone versus, Hey, I'm going to take this photo, send all the information up to the server and then bring you back a, a, a great photo. Um, right. Where it's just, Hey, we're going to take a really good photo and it's all done on the phone. Um, that's kind of like why I'm into that, you know, the, the phone or the camera on the phone. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah. Don't, yeah. I was going to say, I don't really have anything to compare it to because I haven't been that right. big into phones, uh, phone camera. And of course being a, being an audio show, it's pretty difficult for us to go like, Hey, here's some side by side comparison photos of, you know, like right. in very controlled environments. Uh, th th but there's plenty of sources that you can go to for that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Um, but I've been really impressed with it so far. Mm -hmm. Um, more so with the front facing camera, uh, versus mm. the, the rear facing camera, just because it's got that true depth camera. Um, okay. So it seems to me like it can do a way better, like selfie per se. Right. Like a selfie and, and what's, shot. what's true depth. Cause that's, that's one of the Apple marketing terms, right? So, and I don't know what true depth means. It's my understanding that true depth is that IR sensor. So okay. it, it, um, it takes the shot and then it also maps all the touch points or the, the mapping points on your face mm -hmm. and does something to it <laughs> to handle like the bokeh effect behind you okay. and they can simulate like studio light so they can simulate right. lighting. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, one of my students who got the iPhone 8, he was playing around with that uh, while taking a picture of me. And we, we ended up with a really awful looking uh, photo, <laughs> kind of sort of on purpose. Sure. Uh, didn't, <laughs> didn't go to much effort to, to improve it. But <laughs> yeah, there's been some photos I've taken where like uh, it like doesn't recognize the face appropriately mm -hmm. because I'm taking a photo of my dog or one of my cats. So mm -hmm. like it just has a black bar down one side, but I know that that's mm. because a limitation of, well, it doesn't recognize that I'm taking a photo of a cat versus a human. Right. So you're taking a photo of the cat with the front facing camera. Yes. Instead of the, okay. Interesting. So 
benefit of the, the watch is you can use the watch as your view. So uh-huh. you can kind and of as your shutter, you're shooting. Uh, one of those, if you dive into the whole ecosystem, it works great. But if mm-hmm. you're on the outside, it doesn't necessarily work that great. So that's one of the cool features, like um, just of iOS. It's not just with this phone. Is if you have the watch, it can be your viewfinder for the phone. So you can set your phone up far away as uh, you know in a tripod, and then use your watch to snap a photo. Yeah, yeah. And I, I can excuse uh, Apple for not building in a cat's face as an expectation for the the um, studio lighting effects because most cats don't have thumbs. <laughs> right. Some of them do. I've met a cat with thumbs, but most cats don't. Yeah. We should uh, we should talk about Animoji. Oh, yes. Yes, because that is um, the big, like, hey, I have the new iPhone feature, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, it's a good like software proof of concept of mm-hmm. like what you could potentially do. And it really shows off like the true depth mapping of like facial expressions and stuff like that. So I've mm-hmm. sent some, you know, just funny little haha, like, Hey, that's great comments to uh, Rebecca who again, responds back with funny facial, facial gestures and stuff like that with the, with her phone. Um, right. And it, it, it's really kind of fun, but it's kind of like pointless at the same point. Uh, but it's just a proof of concept of where we could take that technology. Um, right. So, like, I don't know if you've seen any of the YouTube videos, but they do uh, Animoji I've, karaoke. Yeah, I've seen some mu- music videos. Yep, yep. Yep. So that is, to me, like, oh, that that's just, just the tip of the iceberg of where they could take this. Um, mm-hmm. so I don't, I don't remember the software, but probably around the HTC Evo era of phones, mm-hmm. if you remember that phone, they had some funny iPhone versus the HTC, uh, you know, iPhone five or iPhone four, where they were kind of making a joke about, um, you know, the people who want an iPhone 4 don't know the difference. They could get a totally better phone if they got the HTC Evo. Sure. But anyways, it's this cartoon where you can type in text, and it would read you this text and then show, like, a cartoon character reading the text to you. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it was always flat graphics, and it was, you know, still funny at the time. But take that into the Animoji where you can actually animate those characters – Mm-hmm. So you and I could have virtual avatars animated while we're talking. You know what? That reminds me of actually um, a program that I've seen like available on Steam, and I'm sure it's you know sold elsewhere as well. Sure. Uh, that'll just take the um, footage from a webcam that's hooked up to your Windows PC and and map that onto a 3D. Uh, rig of of you know you can have like human faces or you can have like animal faces or whatever oh so, sure yeah what is that you uh know? it's called face rig okay yeah so you don't have to do the whole like i have all these dots and these little white yeah and and I, actually i've seen people demonstrating that the animoji does work without all of those sensors because they just like cover up the rest of the sensors with their finger uh, on the iPhone 10 and as long as the front facing camera is still can, still can see you oh, the nice. animoji still follows your face so it's oh. i don't it's not like something that depends on the new hardware on the phone i think that apple just made it exclusive to the iPhone 10 to you know be like this special thing really yeah oh wow. i wonder why they would do that i wonder if it's processing power but um well but like the iphone 8 has the a11 bionic as well right yeah it does huh um i mean it kind of you know it's probably in the same veins of like uh google is putting google lens on the pixel 2 first probably no technical reason for that they just wanted to have an exclusive thing for their phone you know see why do that yeah 
I don't know. I agree. I don't I don't like that kind of uh business practice. <laughs> right, right. It's like make the best possible thing you can for the cheapest amount of money and people will buy it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I've always I've always said I wish that hardware companies would just do hardware and software companies would just do software and um and there you go. Then everybody yeah. can be happy. But then some some would say you'd never push any boundaries. Well, that's the thing. They can push boundaries within their areas. <laughs> <laughs> right true I, I don't i don't want these artificial like okay i am a uh, comcast customer and so therefore i am going to use nbc's you know video streaming service because it's the fastest on my network because comcast decided it would be oh am i talking about net neutrality now sorry <laughs> that's okay i saw where you were going with that but, <laughs> but yeah yeah um how many how many different emoji are available in the animoji oh geez uh i don't know um i use the monkey exclusively <laughs> <laughs> that and the robot you know i probably would use the monkey too because i'm a 1992 and that's the year of the monkey <laughs> yeah there's unicorn chicken bunny panda pig the poop emoji of course. Of course. Uh, the fox, and of course the alien they showed off. Dog, oh, yes. Dog, cat, robot, monkey. So the funny thing is, my list starts with robot, or sorry, monkey and robot. And I don't know if that's because those are the ones I use the most, or if those are the ones that are, by default, first and second. I have no idea. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that that's about everything do you have any other final thoughts for us on this phone um if you're an apple fan and you're you you are in the ecosystem and holding back definitely buy it um i would not buy like right now personally i would not buy any device from apple that doesn't have the face unlock okay um just because like i i grab my ipad and i want to read or I want to play like Hearth a game of Hearthstone or something like that, and I'm like, why isn't this unlocked? And then I'm right. like, oh yeah, I have to physically touch the the button. Like, uh, I know exactly what you mean because my my phone has a fingerprint and my tablet does not. Right. So it's yeah, it's completely different. Yeah, it's just it's amazing. Um, what really interests me is like where they're gonna go with the laptop, and mm -hmm. I know this is total side tangent but like the new laptops have the touch id to unlock right like why they even put that in the laptops like just just skip that like open my laptop it uses the sensor and boom it's unlocked i just don't yeah i don't get it I, to me that's the future like we didn't even talk about how it works in dark and mm -hmm. like pitch black room i can swipe and unlock my phone um, yeah now, again, I'm pale complexion. Maybe it works great for me. I've heard other people have issues with face unlock. But for mm -hmm. me, that, like, they are correct. That That is the future. We are going that route. I would just like the backup of, you know, maybe I just don't, I'm not comfortable with it. Or I just don't trust it yet. I would still mm -hmm. love to have the ability to unlock with a finger um, or with a, with a fingerprint. Um, but that... Again, that's the future. Um, it is yeah. as good as they say it is. Um, I've heard about some hacks around it, but a lot of those require a lot of effort. Um, so, but other than I'm that, also, I'm also, I'm curious to see what this phone means for the future of iPhones. You know, are like obviously there weren't multiple different size options with the iphone 10 right yep. um next year is there going to be a successor to the iphone 8 or are they going to be all in on this new form factor is the iphone se going to get a successor that's the same body size as that one but you know have the full edge to edge display and maybe be at about 4.7 inches you know yeah. um I it it's it's a it's a brave new world. <laughs> it is. It totally is. And so like the the there's been a couple uh other podcasts that have joked about making the iPhone X SE, so the XS phone. <laughs> 
which it's probably better than the uh, iPhone SEX, right? Right, right. But they they would call it, <laughs> so what they should do is they should call it the SE30 because the reason so this is like huge nerd Mac stuff and I can't take credit for this, but the reason back in the day we had a Mac SE, if you remember, it was a small box with a screen, right? Okay. So they had the Mac SE and then they were supposed to come out with a Mac SE 10, which would be X, and they can't do Mac sex. So they called mm -hmm. it the SE 30. Um, <laughs> so that's why they would call the new phone the SE 30. If they do that, that would be amazing, but they probably won't. Um, mm -hmm. So like the idea of the rumor mill right now is they're going to come out with another size of the iPhone 10 with OLED and it's going to be mm -hmm. six and a half. Oh, geez. So go in the opposite direction than I. <laughs> so they're going to go larger, but potentially they're going to. And again, these are all rumors and scuttlebutt. So mm -hmm. they're supposed to come out with a lower cost version um, that is a 6.1 LED screen. So it's huh. still edge to edge, but it's LED versus OLED. Okay. Um, and again, these are like super rumors and. I don't think they'll go smaller. I don't think they need to, but I do know there's a big demographic that likes that. What is it? The iPhone five chassis where it's like yeah. super small, tight. Mm -hmm. um, I and I think that that's why they made the SE in the first place. Right. It was to give those people an opportunity to actually have modern processing power. Yeah. So that would be kind of cool. I agree. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think they'll go much smaller, personally. Yeah, but but, um, but yeah, I think I think this is probably the end of the road for the home button. Yeah, um, I would agree with that. Because it would, it um, would, yeah, it would be very very strange for them to, like, it would almost feel like a, a a step backward for them to continue to have these parallel lines. Yeah, yeah. Although I could see it, like, if there's enough. Um, Oh, what was it? Um, some people, so there's like the pro and the con of touch ID versus the face ID. So mm -hmm. like, let's say someone like manual labor working with their fingers, let's say their hands get cut a lot or, you know, they're, they're just, they're, they can't use a thumb unlock because, or a, a fingerprint unlock. Um, they're a huge proponent of the face unlock, but then mm -hmm. there's, um, I was just, listening to a podcast where um i think it was a security consultant that just said i i just there's no way i can use face unlock it's just not gonna work so figuring out another biometric input having mm -hmm. both options just seems more consumer friendly right uh then just saying oh we're done with it um but i yeah I, I'm also of the proponent of, you know, if someone doesn't try, then we're never going to get anywhere. Right, right, right. You know, like, I'm a big proponent of removing the headphone jack, even though I know that is so anti-consumer. And just, like, a majority of people have devices that use that jack. Mm-hmm. But mm -hmm. I totally am ready for wireless headphones and wireless everything. Um, yeah, yeah. My my transition has been pretty awkward though. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, yeah, I was I was well, forced to buy Bluetooth headphones by virtue of breaking my adapter and then not being able to buy another adapter because availability was you know not there. Sure. Sure. So. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard uh, stories about people at uh, last minute they're on a uh, plane or they're at an airport and they're like, oh, I need headphones. Oh, crap. I can't just walk up to the vending machine, <laughs> put in like 12 bucks, get the you know cheap set of headphones that work for the trip um, mm -hmm. because they don't have the A, the adapter or some sort of Bluetooth setup. So like I said, right. totally not consumer friendly. I, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. But someone's got to take the bullet and say, "Hey, let's move forward." Mm -hmm. You know. All right. 
Well, thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion, everybody. If you have any feedback for us on this episode, give us a ring on Twitter. Find us at the Nexus TV, um, or send us an email at the Nexus TV at gmail.com. Um, I have been your host, Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. Uh, Aaron, how about you? Uh, I'm on Twitter under Apit Aaron. Um, that's about everywhere I am. Um, yep. And uh, keep in mind that this episode of Second Opinion is uh, released under a Creative Commons license. So if you would like to take any parts of this, remix it, whatever, uh, feel free to do that. And if you have any suggestions for other stuff that we can review on this show, um, or if you you know would, would like to guest and tell us about a cool electronic gadget that you've used, um, we would love to have you. Have a good one. Thanks for having me. <laughs>